ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नमस्ते सो we continue with the discussion between the vrittikaras those who like to make a difference in brahman to create brahman or the concept of brahman as an object with duality <laughs> and uh the home team the vedantins those who follow the actual instructions of the upanishads So what are those instructions? We've been talking here about how since Brahman is non-dual, it's not really possible to meditate on it directly. And yet this is what the vrittikaras would have us do. They want to say that we should meditate on Brahman directly. So what actually happens when you try to do that? Well, you can get lost in a rabbit hole looking for Brahman. Huh? Where is Brahman that I can meditate on it? And maybe you start regarding something uh like the inner light seen in meditation or some concept or idea or envisioning of Brahman. in some form and then meditating on that as brahman because remember the meaning of meditation is holding an object in the mind and concentrating on it for a sufficient time that the nature or the quality of one's consciousness changes so the operative thing here is the concentration the object is secondary so it's okay that you know you speak wrongly <laughs> we all do it you know it's just like we speak wrongly about the self when somebody says you know hey dave and i say here i am Ah, yo soy. <laughs> that I speak of myself as the body, and I'm not the body. I'm the consciousness. See, strictly speaking, I should say my body is here, not that I am here. So, in the same way, strictly speaking, one should say. I meditate on Brahman as something as some object which is accessible to the mind. Otherwise, it's not possible to concentrate on it. Brahman is imperceivable. There are a million quotes. <laughs> I mean, look, last night I went through the Brahma Sutras and I looked up meditation on and i got like hundreds of responses and so i started cycling through skipping through uh one jumping one to the other you know and uh look what happened every time the context is actually meditating on something as brahman either the individual soul or some energy like prana or light or the the being in the sun where the sun globe becomes you know the de facto object of the meditation and brahman is simply in the background huh that's the way it has to be because if brahman is sought directly either you go on a wild goose chase searching for phenomena and brahman is never a phenomenon or after failing that <laughs> you accept one of these phenomena as a symbol for brahman and meditate on it such as the meditation on the five bodies meditation on light 
or air or space or consciousness as Brahman and so on and so on and so on. Some people use a mantra. Mantras work. But it's not because the mantra has any power. It's because the concentration on the mantra has the power. See, this is where people mistake the actual uh, effects of Brahman in experience. See, they reject their own experience in favor of their theory that Brahman is an object. And so they don't realize Brahman. They only realize their conception about Brahman. However, this is not true of the Advaita conception that aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Now, this cannot be meditated upon or you will, you will be misled into the world of concepts. Rather, you have to meditate on Brahman as something, as the creator, as the beloved, as the deity in a sacrifice of some kind, etc., etc., etc. The scriptures are full of thousands of different kinds of meditations, and they're all indirectly on Brahman. And so what is the valuable part? Is the concentration required to perform any of these meditations? That is the active ingredient. That is the actual force. And after some time, when that concentration matures, when it becomes steady, then you can realize Brahman as the self. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. The invisible, inscrutable self with a capital S that looks out of the eyes of every living creature. Oh, that's another form of meditation on Brahman, by the way. Meditation on the eye. This makes a good couple's meditation, or you can use a mirror. Or you can look at the eye from within. It doesn't matter. Any object which is meditated upon as Brahman is certainly an expression of Brahman, a creation of Brahman. Because Brahman is being. And all these different creations, all these different objects, borrow their being from Brahman. Because Brahman is the source of being. So Brahman is indirectly there in every object. So the valuable part then is to select one object that you like because you will not be able to concentrate effectively on an object unless it's something you really like. See, this is why bhakti is so powerful. In bhakti, one accepts a symbol of a personal form as the object, as the manifestation of Brahman. And, of course, that personal form has all lovable qualities. That's the nature of a deity. Or one can meditate on oneself as Brahman. I mean, the possibilities are unlimited. The important point is that whatever, you, whatever symbol you meditate on becomes a metaphor for Brahman, which has to remain inconceivable imperceivable, and unknowable, because that's its nature. So now I'm using up all the time. <laughs> I guess I better read the passage where the Vedantan objects to the arguments of the Vritikara. Has it not been pointed out that here, in the Purva and Uttara Mimamsas, there is a difference of the objects inquired into. 
In the section dealing with rites, etc., the things to be inquired into are the religious acts that have still to emerge into being. But here, in the section on knowledge, the object inquired into is Brahman, that is an established reality, existing forever. As between these two, the result of the knowledge of Brahman should be different from the result, heaven, etc., of the knowledge of virtuous deeds, depending on performance. Okay, <laughs> the Vedas and all religious works based on them, such as the Mimankshas of the Vritikaras, who are arguing here, are based on the division between religious works, which are basically sadhana or preparation for enlightenment, uh, acquiring the qualifications for enlightenment and those processes that lead to enlightenment itself, which are not works, but knowledge. So this is sometimes called the poverty marg and nivriti marg. Poverty means material activities because those are all temporary. Whatever objects, whatever results you get from religious rituals, whatever good karma you generate, is going to be used up. It's going to pass out of existence. So that's called poverty, which the resemblance to our English word poverty is not accidental. And then there's the nivriti marg. Nivriti means nothing. Huh? where one does not accept anything as a symbol or the nature of Brahman, but one renounces everything. Nivrati becomes sannyasi, becomes renunciant, detached, by discriminating between that which is temporary, the world, that which is eternal, Brahman. So if you do that, you wind up neti, 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 <laughs> rejecting everything except Brahman. And since Brahman is the self, one rejects everything which is not the self, which includes the five bodies, the coverings, the anamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, manomaya kosha, vijnanamaya kosha, and even the anandamaya kosha. The Anandamaya Kosha is consciousness, and consciousness is automatically blissful. But consciousness is also a form of duality. So the ultimate, the Uttara Mimamsa, the part of the Vedas that deals with ultimate knowledge, rejects not only all actions, it also rejects consciousness as an action, as a covering of pure being, Brahman. So where does that leave us? It means that there are no actions prescribed in the Upanishads. Even if we go like I did and search for meditation, it's always meditation on this as Brahman the mind, the Vedas, the deities, prana, life energy, or even consciousness itself, vijnana, intelligence, as Brahman. And that, as we pointed out before, is a kind of positioning where the object is in the front, but Brahman is there in the background. See? And this is the technique that is praised and instructed throughout the Upanishads and which actually leads to authentic realization of Brahman, which is and only can be expressed by the Mahavakya. Aham Brahmasmi Tattvam Asi Aung Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya